Are you ready for the Low Blows Network? Finally, they finally gave me my own podcast. Jerry comes to the Low Blows Network. One of the biggest legends of the Irish wrestling scene, Jerry talks to his wrestling friends and beyond about the hobbies in their lives that they're most nerdy about. In Talk Nerdy to Me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's another Talk Nerdy to Me with your host, Jerry. And I'm back on location once again. I tell you, I'm really liking this location stuff. So, uh, get out of the, the studio. It's a very much studio. We're in Dublin City Centre. We're in Temple Bar. We're in Buskers on the ball. And I've got a very, very special guest this week. He is a man that once was my son, but I had to put him for adoption. We had to just get rid of him. <laughs> He is a man that has been around in the Irish wrestling scene for a very, very long time. And I'm he's one of my good friends in the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Jamie Coleman. Jamie, how are you? I'm good, Gerald. How are you? Gerald. Now, Gerald, <laughs> you know that I'm allowed to call you Gerald. You are the only man that I allow use the L in my name. Because it's either Jared, Jerry, or Gerard, and you call me Ger- Who Gerald. Who called you Gerard? Just a wife? Oh, God, no, my mother. And she says, oh. Gerald, when I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> right. So, Gerald, it's just for me and you. Just for me and you, yeah. Me Anyone else gets special. a smack at the back of the head. Okay, well, that makes me feel special, Gerald. And you should feel special. I say, Gerald, so much. I, am, I hate you. I hate <laughs> you right now. <laughs> and I'd like to encourage everybody listening to call Jerry Gerald the next time they see him. Yeah, and, I, and, and they'll, get a clatter. they'll get a clatter across yeah, the back of the head. Just, just do it once. <laughs> Take one clatter. <laughs> well, Jamie, we're here to talk about something very special, and this is an absolute exclusive uh, for my podcast. Very delighted to say that. But you have a brand new podcast coming out on the Lobos Network. Do I? You do. Really? Yes. First I've heard of it, Gerald. <laughs> well, you know what? You're fired. Get out. No, Done. no. I don't want to be fired. Uh, yeah, I do. I have a new podcast coming out. It's going to be called uh, Hot Tag Time Machine. Oh, I love that name. Do that you? is an amazing name. Okay, that's good. Uh, it's um, it, obviously a play on Hot Tub Time Machine, mm-hmm. and the idea is that we're going to talk about stuff from the past, which I'm sure you got it from the name. So it's, <laughs> it's uh, basically what it is, uh, Gerald, is um, oh. it's going to be a trip, a nostalgic trip down memory lane. It's just an excuse for me to get out of the house and talk about the wrestling that I loved growing up, which was... Everything from 1990 until I discovered you could get six cans for a fiver around 2001. <laughs> so that, that's when, you know, Friday nights became less about Raw and Nitro and more about six cans of blue known down the park. So you like a big bag of cans as well. Wrestling and a big bag of cans. And a big bag of cans, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Wrestling and cans. That's my life. So you're going to talk about basically your your knowledge, your knowledge, but also other people's knowledge of of, of past wrestling. We're not talking about new stuff nowadays. We're talking about the old stuff. No, I mean, look, I think I think the idea is that we will touch on the new stuff, but it'll probably be in a negative light. <laughs> uh, and, and and then, to be honest with you, Gerald, I, I, it's just going to be chilled, relaxed, and uh, did, did you hear did you hear the man walking by? That was a man. <laughs> By the way, that wasn't a, that wasn't a lady in heels. You might not have picked that up. You might need to edit that out. So I'll give you four seconds. Uh, yeah, so I was definitely getting left in. <laughs> only if the footsteps were heard. So basically, um, I have a new podcast coming out. Where was I? Yeah. So it's going to be. Uh, we are going to touch on the new stuff, mm-hmm. but it's going to be kind of in comparison to the old stuff. Yeah. And I think like I don't have a co-host. Uh, but I'm going to have like a, a series of different co-hosts every week. Uh, Gerald, you might do one with me. I will, yeah, Actually, absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a good idea now that just, I think we'll of it. Just, we'll just talk about Stone Cold. Now that you know, you, he's uh, my absolute hero. Well, there you go. We can talk about him. Well, not the woman beaten, but you know. Yeah, but we're going to touch on a, a certain a time period topic or maybe a person. Mm-hmm. We're not going to... It's kind of like reeling in the years, but yeah. if we do reeling in the years, we only have 10 episodes. So, you know, we're <laughs> going we're gonna to touch on different time periods, different... Uh, events, different like mm-hmm. groundbreaking events, maybe that happened. We might touch on uh, the NWO. We might touch on uh, Austin McMahon. We might touch on a certain period of 1996. Mm-hmm. We might say, let's cover February to April 96. Who knows? It's just going to be chilled. It's going to be relaxed. And as I say, it's it's nostalgic. Mm-hmm. So anybody that was that that grew up in that that boom period of wrestling from 
you know, late 80s into early 2000s, it's going to be the show for you, which means it's the show for you, Jerry, <laughs> because you are, in fact, as old as me, if not older. No, well, I, I did play your father, but I, I thought at one point, I was like, I'm playing your father, but I thought you were older than me. I think you, you know? might be a little bit younger than me. What age are you? Do you well, what, what, what age are you? What, no, what age are you? <laughs> 35. And you look every day of it. <laughs> yeah, I am actually older than you because I turned 36 this year. Yeah, I've, t- I've, told peop- I've told many people that story that I play a 60-year-old man, but you're actually older than me. <laughs> that must hurt. It, <laughs> that Joe rang you and said, listen, we need somebody to play Jamie's dad. First person you know we thought it was you. You know, I remember that, Carl. It was like, Jerry, you know the way you, you know, put on makeup and stuff and dance around at Comic Cons? Like, yeah. Like, Would you like to play a 60 year old man? It's like, yeah, fuck it, give it a go. Dance around at Comic Cons. And yeah, that's, that's where it came out, Mr. Humperdinck, you know? Yeah, well. Good, good old crack. You broke my laptop there. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, that was good crack. We had, a, we had some good fun. You were. Me and you, me and you, you know, being together in the ring was obviously. This was, I'm just, I'll, just, I'll just tell the listeners what you're talking about because you haven't bothered. It's no, o- o- over the top wrestling. We were. What's that? I never heard of it. You were. A lot of people have. <laughs> you were Jerry Humperdink. I was. And I was William J. Humperdink. Mm-hmm. And we were father and son. And we had some, we had some good crack. The, the it was ridiculous. Sheer, the sheer amount of times that I had the mic and I nearly called you Jamie during their promos. I yeah. never did it. I was like. I did it in recorded promos when yeah, we did. Okay, we was like, yeah. "My son Jamie, shit, no, let's yeah. let's do that again." My son William, and I had to do it again. But we had we had some good times. But even before OTT, we had some good times, and we we, we had a lot of good times actually, all the way back in 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 NLW when you were the one that, one of the ones that started it. Yeah, we did AW War and, and beyond. You got into wrestling what, about fifteen years ago. About that, got into like I started to yeah, be involved. To be involved in, in it, Irish yeah. wrestling. Uh, like as, uh, how far back do we want to? Yeah, let's let's not go too far back. Because mm-hmm. when I was a teenager, I had a dirt sheet, and I was one of the only. I think it was the only person in Ireland that had a dirt sheet, <laughs> and it was okay. Like it was kind of successful to a point. Like for <laughs> a young fella doing a dirt sheet, it was yeah. okay. Like uh, I don't know, I don't know if you remember. Let's let's go back that far. <laughs> teletext. Do you remember Teletext? I do. But <laughs> Sky TV had a Teletext. They got wind that people had these fanzines and dirt sheets. And what you could do is you could send your fanzine or dirt sheet or let's just call it a magazine, fuck yeah. it, like, uh, to Sky and they'd review it. And they gave it five stars and said it was brimming. Oh, wow. Brimming. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never even heard that word. I'd heard brimming. brimming but I had never heard brimming. Oh, let's be honest. You didn't hear about brimming back then. <laughs> I had some floppy disks, some shit oh. on it. <laughs> but no, it, there was no. Um, I didn't have any floppy disks. Let's just let's just cancel that. <laughs> edit that. Uh, so basically, uh, it, it, what happened then was people started ordering this fanzine, and it became okay. Like mm. became for, like for a young fella doing it in his, out of his home computer, and his ma printing it in her job, it was grand. Like so, uh, that was the first little bit of like wrestling. Uh, work I suppose that yeah. I did and through that met a lot of people that would kind of start the the domino effect to getting more involved and that was I met Simon Rochford through that mm-hmm. who launched Irish Rip Wrestling and I worked with him on the first couple of Irish Rip Wrestling shows and then I, I don't know what I did, uh, maybe for a little while I'd done nothing and then I'd done uh, K- oh, Blake Norton CPW, wasn't CPW, it? CPW, Celtic, Celtic yeah. Rest, Celtic Pro Wrestling, Pro, yeah. yeah. Uh, I worked on that for a little while, and then we all had a row with Blake Norton, I think. <laughs> it was <laughs> Blake Norton had a row with everyone, <laughs> and uh, a bunch of us left, and we started No Limit Wrestling. Yeah. And that was me, Joe Cabray, and Alex Breslin yeah. started No Limit Wrestling. And that's where we first met. That's that where we the, met, The yeah. very, very first show. Yeah, because Joe was knew you. I to be ref. Joe knew you, yeah. and he was very adamant that we needed somebody that could ref that, that a good ref to the point where it was either you or we were flying in someone from germany and thank god you said you have nothing to do <laughs> so you came down and you done it and uh yeah that that's how me and gerald first met that's how that's how the humper things first i'm gonna edit this and it's gonna be a bleep every time you say my name bleep <laughs> But yeah, no, we've 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 done tours around the country, and I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that I didn't get to do tours of Europe. Which yeah, why didn't you come on the tours of Europe? Uh, because my invi- wife wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
very honest. Well, my I, was job, you, my, I was hoping you wouldn't say I wasn't asked. My, <laughs> no, I was asked. I know, but no, the uh, no, the what? Well, the the wife was like, "Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, I'll fucking kill you when you get back." Uh, no, the job job wouldn't let me at the time. I remember the first tour we did though, AWR. Yeah, two thousand eight. Um, that's right. That was Fan- a five day tour that's around right. uh, Ireland. Yeah, yeah. And then there was the the longer one. We did a, was nine days then around Ireland, wasn't it? It was nine or ten days around Ireland? Yes. And I remember that one. Um, the only reason I was able to do nine days was because I rang my boss and I said, uh, I need a bit of extra time off. Oh, why, why, what's this for? You have no holidays left. Oh, it's for a wrestling. Oh, my son loves wrestling. Front row seats. He was like, there Jamie, you can you sort that out? No problem, Gerald. There you go, yeah. Gerald, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking saying it now as well. Yeah, I and that was how I did it. Yeah, that's a, that was a great time. That was the first tour we done was... It's hard to remember... But we done. Um, I know the second one we done Dublin. Yeah, that was at Bre- Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah, and the fourth one we did definitely had Gangrel on it. Test was on the fourth one as well. Sort of. <laughs> um, God bless him. Nice man. Uh, who else was on it, Terry? The, well, the, I, see, I can't remember the, the fourth one. That Chris was Masters the, was Chris on. Chris Masters, it. Chris Masters yeah, Joe Legend, yeah. Chris yeah. Masters and Joe Legend were on. They were the main event. Uh, Gangrel was on it. Test was on it. Who else was on that bus? <laughs> Very bad at, at that, that first tour. <laughs> Lots of wires, lads. Paddy Morrow was on Paddy it. Paddy was on it. Sean, Sean Bellin was on it. Grant, uh, just Duncan the Sardley uh, yeah. was on it. Yeah. Justy? Was Justy on it? Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> 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 he, he, he slithered his way in later in life. Yes, he did, yeah. yeah and then yeah. He just got destroyed by Sabu in the, in the process. He only came on his ring crew, in fairness yeah. to him. So the fact that he got a match alone was, was pretty good yeah. at that point. Like, it was it was a guy called Bean who who, who yeah. passed away. Who a lot of people will know the name. He sat me down one day and said, uh, "Justy, would love to come on that that tour." I said, "Yeah, but he can't because he's too unpredictable." And he said, "Oh, just for a ring crew, and I'll mind them." I said, "Okay." <laughs> and uh, I think it was that that tour that we we'd nobody to. Sabu showed up with yeah. a broken back, and said, "I, I can't do anything. I'm, I'm fucking here, but I can't do anything." We're like, "Okay, can you throw a chair at Justy's head?" Yeah, well, that's all you need to do then. And that's all he did. And we sent Justy out to take a, a chair sh- a chair before we knew about concussions and whatnot. Yeah, no, there was no concussions yeah, back then. But, uh, no, there was fireballs being thrown at people. And <laughs> yeah. <that> was <laughs> and I, was, I was the one who had to keep that stuff in my pockets. I had to keep like this little pe- like lighter in one yeah. paper in the other. And he's like, yeah, you just you just put it in one in one pocket and one. Never put them together. Never put them together. You light your balls on fire. I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he said, yeah, so you take one out really slowly when I got like a, a headlock on. I was like, okay. And then you take the other one out. And you Did you have to hold that the whole show? The whole show. <laughs> in my pockets. I'm like, I'm And going down and doing counts. You should have done it. Yeah. It, old British style. One, uh, <laughs> two, are standing up in the corner. I did consider it at one yeah. point. I was like, no, I don't. It was, it was actually that tour, that, that Dublin show that we did. The basketball was, arena. That basketball arena. Yeah. And it was Gary, Gary Carberry. He was doing referee. Face. Yeah, I, I no, I was refereeing. and he was he was. Oh, he was wrestling. the manager. Now he was, was he not wrestling Joe? No, definitely not. He was managing. Uh, he was managing whoever Joe. Was he facing. managed Joe. Oh, it was Joe and, and Paul Tracy? Was, well, well he was managing Paul. No, it wasn't. No, Paul wasn't Tracy Paul? worked uh, Joe Legend on that show. Oh, okay. Pretty sure. I see, could be wrong. I have a terrible. But you Paul Tracy on that show. Me. No, <laughs> see, this is what happens. It starts to come back to me. But yeah. It comes back to me all wrong. But I, I, but I do it, remember... It, it uh, was Joe's match anyway, I remember. And well, I was Gary was managing either Joe or whoever Joe was working. I yeah. don't remember who Joe was working. You're right, he was. Jo- um, Gary was managing because I remember I went down for a tree count and he decided to elbow drop me. That was the, the part there of the match go, yeah. that, that was to happen. Yeah. But whatever happened, I, was, I wasn't I was flat. I was kind of on all fours doing it. And he bruised, the, he bruised a load of ribs oh, really? on me, yeah, to the point where it was the last date of that tour. And I was having an argument with Maxer in the ring, and he shoved me into the corner, and I gave him a smack. I said, don't touch me like that again, you hurt me fucking ribs. Well, that was a great tour, though. I'll never forget that tour. That was fantastic. Great fun, yeah. That was, um, that was just on a bus yeah. for a week or whatever it was, just having the crack. I remember the best advice he ever got was actually from Eugene. Eugene on that tour. And he was like, don't, you know, don't ask the crowd. You know, if, if I've done something wrong, look at them and let yeah. them tell you. But don't ask them. Yeah. Don't ask them that. Oh, has, did he do something wrong? Because if you were asking them, then you know you have to disqualify me. He had a good mind for the business. Yeah, uh, I, I think like his his gimmick would lead you to believe that he didn't, because you, <laughs> you know, he's yeah. very good at it. But he he did have a very good mind for the business. Yeah, difficult man. At at some points, just he wasn't. Uh, 
Didn't like people being laid onto the bus. That would put them in a bad mood. Yes. And Maxer and Paddy Morrow were always laid onto the bus. Well, they did it on purpose. <laughs> or was it a drink that did it? Could have been a few points the night before, all right. <laughs> to the point where the, the best one was Sabu, as I said, had a broken back on that, that tour. Yeah. And he, uh, at one point, we'd done a thing where all he had to do on the show was the lights would go out, they'd come back on, and he'd be in the ring, and he would beat up one of them, Paddy or Maxer. Mm-hmm. And uh, Maxer forgot one day that it was coming. And the lights went out and he thought it was a blackout. And he's, I could hear him shouting, Pal, is the power gone? I said, no, you're about to get fucking... You're about to get battered by Sabu. Oh, shit, I forgot. I don't know why that was. That could be a few points the night before as well. But, uh, yeah, they, they were... They were they were, some, they were the best times. They, they were the were, best times. Yeah, they were. Now, you know, Irish wrestling has, has evolved since then, and you've been part of that evolution all along the way from, from the very beginning. You said you did a little bit of Irish whip, and you moved on to CPW and NLW. But what's it like running out NLW? Um, we started in NLW in 2006. We were the first people, I think we were the first people that we were in the wrestling school to run mm. a show. And... We like we tried very hard to get everybody from all the wrestling schools in Ireland, which was NWA, which we did. Mm-hmm. We worked with Paul Tracy uh, to get NWA lads. We worked with uh, up the north, whatever they were called at the time. I think it was U- Ulster Pro Wrestling. Yeah. So we had you know Duncan Assardley come down and and, and uh, Bonesaw, and we we worked closely with them. CPW. <laughs> I don't think we wanted anyone from CPW. Uh, <laughs> we wanted Max Mafioso as a manager. You remember yeah, Max? Yeah. Little Max, Big Max. Whatever way you look at him. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I, think, I think that was I think that's the only person we had from, from CPW. Yeah. And well, then, me, I, I was CPW at the time. So you I, were was, CPW? I was yeah, I was ref. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Were you CPW? I had, I hadn't, yeah, I hadn't started as Jerry Soul at that point. I, I was brought in to. Then you, ref. Were in C, you were in CPW at the time? No, I was, I was refing. Oh, where are you referencing? We're yeah. referencing CBW? Yeah. Okay. And then I, moved, I was like, right, we'll, we'll move on because yeah, okay. I wanted to do managing. And oh, really? it was Blake Very that gave good. me my, my kind of catchphrase, the man to know. Oh, I'm well. the man to know. Don't you love him so much? Oh, absolutely. For that? Absolutely. Uh, and then we, um, we wanted Irish whip mm. people, but they were having none of that. The only Irish whip person we got was Joe's brother, Gary. Mm. And we, he was George McFly in Irish whip. That's but we right, couldn't yeah. use the name, so we called him Georgie Mac. And uh, yeah, we just we done our first show on the t- I want to say the nineteenth of August two thousand and that's a fantastic memory. Uh, <laughs> it could have been the first. I don't know. <laughs> I want to say the nineteenth. I think it was the nineteenth of August in the Ringside Club at the uh, National Stadium where mm-hmm. OTT Contenders is held now. So uh, we done our first show on there. We postered a lot. We done a lot. Of, we went out every chance we got postered. And we we done well. We got like three hundred and fifty people in there for our first show. It was a big deal. That we show was sexy looking up. ring. Yeah. We had uh, we got new aprons. We got an entrance made. We put an awful lot of we bought a ring. We put an awful lot of effort into the whole yeah. thing. Like uh, we bought the ring. We bought the entrance. We got the entrance way made. Alex Breslin's brother in law slash uncle slash auntie slash somebody from poor family <laughs> made the uh, entrance way for us, and it was cool looking. And uh, we done what I think was a pretty good show back then. Oh, it was. We brought brought people together on one show that may not have been there before. And the easiest easiest people to work with were were NWA Ireland. They were all over it. They were just like, yeah, whatever you need. Um, So we had Paddy Morrow, we had Maxer. And the main event was Maxer from NWA Mm -hmm. versus Duncan Azardi from up the north. Uh, And uh, what the... Niall Herbert, who was name was All Star Anthony oh, Idle, there come back to me. There we go. And he was like from NLW because mm. he jumped with us from CPW. So uh, that was the main event, and it was pretty good. Yeah. It was a pretty good main event, and everyone seemed to have a good time. And that was our first. That was a great. That was show. our first out, and we were we were quite happy with that yeah. show at, at the end. That was a really good show. Those the, I, I it was the first time I'd met any of the NWA guys before. There was only one time I'd seen them before that, and it was like a house show that IWW had done. And it was th- they were kind of doing like an invasion angle. And that was the first time I'd ever seen any of them. And there we go. 
Is your woman walking by again? <laughs> <laughs> but I'd, I'd never, I'd never seen him before. I never introduced myself to him. So it was the very first time I'd met the likes of Maxer and Paddy and yourself, and yeah. just always very welcome and absolute crazy. Every one of that locker room, fucking mental. Yeah. But so welcome. Yeah, Mane and yeah, and you were immediately part of the crew. As soon as you went in, you were immediately part of the crew. And, and Justy was uh, part of Team Mega at that point. That's right. And I didn't know who Team Mega were, but Joe said, I really want, and he'll kill me for this, <laughs> you re- we re- I really <laughs> want uh, Team Mega on the show because <laughs> one of the lads uh, is funny, Justy. So I just want to laugh at him. And he regrets that ever since. That was, that was the <laughs> beginning of the end for Joe and Justy. <laughs> So obviously, you know, you've been a part of the scene now for for a good a good many years. Uh, you've met a lot of people along the way. Yeah. Um, where are you going for? Is are, are more NLW shows coming? Yeah, we do uh, NLW. I still run NLW shows, yeah. uh, and we took a hiatus for a while because I lost interest in everything uh, for a little while there, and we came back then last year. So NLW was back. We primarily run uh, the Mo Theatre in Nace, which is only 25 minutes from Dublin, and there's a bus there, and there's free parking, and it's a lovely venue, and they serve nice paninis in the cafe adjacent to the hall, and it's lovely, and everyone should come and see us there. Uh, We are back there on October the 13th with a show called Going for Gold. (laughs) Going for Going for Gold. Uh, With the idea being that we're going to crown tag team champions, the first NLW tag team champions. And uh, it is, there's going to be a good story going into that. So uh, that's going to be a, a historic moment in Irish wrestling. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> because that's going to be the first um, the first time that uh, a male and female tag team are going to be aiming to be the first intergender tag team champions Ooh. in the country. Now, that's a f- that's an exclusive right now, I'm, I'm assuming. No, it's not, Jerry. No. It was pretty much teased at the last time. Was it? Show, okay. Well, no, why it wasn't hold. there? So thanks very much. <laughs> you, know, I mean, whatever, you know, whatever, you know. It's uh, LJ Cleary and Amy Alonzi uh, on NLW shows. They're called the Beautiful Unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> That's not stupid, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, for the last the, the last two shows, they um, they done a, a, an intergender tag team yeah. match, and they won both their matches because they're good mm-hmm. competitors. Yes, and we announced that we were going to do the the tag team. Champions of the next show. Yeah. <laughs> it's so silly. Yes. But it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we said we're going to do the Tag Team Champions uh, crowned at the next show, going for going for gold. And <laughs> LJ and Amy said, well, hang on a second. Like, Why can't we be uh, Tag Team Champions of the world, of Ireland, of the uh, nation? Yeah. Whatever, you know. Nice. Of nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's the story going in, is why, why can't they... Why can't they do it in t- 2019? Well, that's it, they And can. as the promoter, I say, why can't they? Yeah. Or do I say, <laughs> surely that's not acceptable? <laughs> Find out October 13th, no theatre, nice. Tickets Can't on sale there. now. Tickets on sale now, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask me in a while, and I'll, I'll give the exclusive on the tickets, because the tickets are not on sale, but there is a way to get tickets half price, no booking fee, Ooh. before the tickets officially go on sale. So... Like if that doesn't keep people listening, Gerald, I, t- I, I tell don't you know that, what will. That, that's almost a Rick Nash special right there because he does like little specials like that, you know. Well, there you go. It's just, well, he only does it so he gets to pay the staff less, but that's the mm-hmm. only reason. Yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> don't, know, don't know how I could pay them any less, to be honest with you, and I don't give them anything. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> All my wrestlers have full benefits, health insurance, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> have you been uh, in, uh, working with Independent, yeah? <laughs> David Starr? Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish. I w- I'm also, uh, I also, w- while we're at it, I also run uh, Heel Turn Apparel yes. slash IrishWrestlingTees.com. Uh, I would love to be printing uh, David Starr's stuff and have approached him about it and was told, nah, <laughs> I'm okay. So that's okay. But uh, while we're plugging stuff, Jerry, just yes. very quickly. Keep it coming. Heel Turn Apparel. Yes. Uh, Launched a clothing brand, uh, Heel Turn Apparel. We've done some hats and some t shirts and some hoodies. They were lovely. Then we decided we'll do uh, IrishWrestlingTees.com, which is basically a platform for Irish wrestlers to sell their t shirts on a much, much, much smaller scale than the ever so popular pro wrestling tees in Chicago. So uh, <laughs> log on to just pop 
tees.com into your search bar. That'll bring you to our uh, heel turn shop, and um, we can sell you some stuff there if you want to buy some stuff. At a good price. Uh, fairly extortionate, really, <laughs> when you add in the post of the packaging, <laughs> but like <laughs> we have to cover our costs. <laughs> uh, we had a Katie Harvey t shirt there, we had a Martin Hype t shirt. Uh, we're pretty low on stock at the minute, but by the time this airs, I might have uh, some more stuff on there. Uh, we definitely have lads from the flats and Session Mark Martinez stuff up there okay. at the moment as we record in real time, but I intend to have more by the time this airs. So. Okay, well, but, but this episode, you, you listen to it on our new slot of a Monday now, and you're going to be your show, which is, name again? Monday Night Raw. Uh, <laughs> Hot Tag Time Machine is the name of the show. It's a, a nostalgic look back at 90s wrestling slash late 80s, early 2000s. Early 2000s. And yeah. that's going to be run the, sec- the next Monday after uh, this show airs. Correct. So are you looking forward to getting good guests in? <laughs> Yeah, well, the the, the first uh, well, I'm gonna have a, a co-host every week, like yeah. a revolving door of co-hosts, mm-hmm. because I don't like you know people have jobs, so we can't yeah. just we I don't I sort <laughs> myself and don't do a lot, but uh, yeah, like I want to get like a different perspective though. So mm-hmm. uh, some people have been speaking to us like, oh, I love 1997 WWF. Well, okay, we'll do a show on 1997 WWF. Someone else told me they love. Uh, 2000 WCW. Yeah. Do There's we do a so show much on that? to do. Like, yeah, like it's all about what. It's all about what was nostalgic to you, growing up. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Gerald, what would have been your? Uh, 98, 99. St- anything to do with Stone Cold and yeah. Then the comeback 2001. Yeah. yeah so like that's that stuff. that's where like if if me and you were to sit down and discuss that era, mm. like that our nostalgic wrestling. That's what we discuss. We discuss Steve Austin yeah. and his rise from stunning to Stone Cold. Yeah, actually, you know? I'd love that, yeah. That's yeah. a good, write that and down. That episode is coming Write that soon. down, that's a good tag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stunning the stone cold. <laughs> uh, and, and that's what we discussed. So I think um, the first show we're going to do, I'm going to be co-hosted by Low Blows founder Rick Nash, and we're going to do uh, 1999, first quarter of 1999. Oh, nice. Reason that's being, a good time. Rick told me that he knows that era, so he didn't have to watch anything to remember. <laughs> that's all that was, like. The least amount of work yeah. he has to do, the better. I had to get up at 6 o'clock and watch WrestleMania 15 the other day. <laughs> that's when I realized, what the fuck am I have to get myself into here? But yeah, like that's, um, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of having a seven-month-old child that gets up at quarter to six every morning. You can watch a bit of wrestling when he has his nap uh, a couple of hours later. Like So um, I watched WrestleMania 15 the other day and I have an awful lot to say about that show. What the fuck were they doing? Hanging the big boss man out of his cell. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's our first show is going to be that. We're just going to take a, a chilled out look back. Like, it's mm. going to be fairly random. It's going to be fairly chilled out. We hope that, like, it's just going to be easy listening. Like, nobody, we're not going to get too deep into it. We will touch briefly on what's happening now yeah. in wrestling because, like, wrestling is still, it's still fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, it's still great. Like, it's just that, like, when you're when you're my age, which is 36, and you have a wife and a child and, and all the all the shit that goes with life. Yeah. It's it's just sometimes it's nice to just look back, God, oh, do you remember like when I was, you know, fourteen and, and, and the ex were teaching me how to do silly stuff that I shouldn't have known how to do. Like <laughs> you know, like it's just fun to look back and I think like for me, like I, I started watching wrestling in nineteen ninety and I was seven. So I grew up as wrestling grew up. Mm-hmm. So when like when I was fourteen WWF was turning 14, if you know what I mean. Like they yeah. were, that was growing up as well. So all that like Hulk Hogan era was great for me when I was seven and eight and Bret Hart and, and into 1995, which was probably some terrible stuff. But like but I have very fond memories of Dean Douglas scraping his fingers down the blackboard because yeah. I loved it because I was nine or ten and, and I was just eating whatever they were giving me. Like, But as I don't think if they had kept that crap up, I don't think I would have been watching come 1997 because that's when you start going to your teenage years, but they evolved mm. into a more mature product as I became more mature, for want of a better word, and that's why I kept watching. So you basically went through puberty with the WWF. I went in, through in, in pu- puberty with, with Vince McMahon himself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very scary image, Jesus. 
Now, you, you know, you, you, you're going to have Rick on your very first episode and then subsequent guests on. Yeah, you'll me, have me, me and on Rick and Nash are going to discuss uh, 1999. 1999. And we don't get along, so that's going to be interesting. Oh, well, yeah. I, I can't wait to hear that one. Yeah. But if, if 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 it was me interviewing you, let's say I'm I'm you and you are interviewing me right exactly, now, Gerald. Yeah, if I'm, Gerald's if had a few. <laughs> I've had a few points. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure. Are sure going to be bored by this? By the way, oh yeah, absolutely. Star Wars and, and yeah, no. We can discuss Game of Thrones if you like. That's I, I, oh, you I like watch, Game of Thrones? We talk yeah, Game of Thrones. I watch a bit of that. Yeah. But anyway, your <laughs> question was. Well, the question is, what would be your moment in time that you would choose to talk about on the show? If what? I could pick any time to. Yeah. Like I'd, I pick Stone Cold, Rick is going oh, for yeah, the okay. early 99, what would you go for? Uh, I think my fondest memories are 96, 97. Mm. I think that's when, when, when it really started to evolve into, uh, that, was, that was the WCW, WWF war. So yeah. that's when it really started to evolve into something good. But then again, like, I fucking loved 19, like I loved the uh, 1990s Survivor Series. Mm. Like I loved that show. Like I watched that show all day long. That was th- like that's that's when I was seven. So that's like that's when I sat in awe in front of the TV. Uh, I also sat in awe in front of the TV in '97. It just looked a bit funnier. <laughs> Me sitting in front of the TV and not in a chair when I was thirteen instead of seven. But like it was just. I think those two periods, like that first, that early nineties, nineteen ninety stuff, uh, and and. 97 uh, 97 is just probably my favourite year if I'm being honest that's when I was locked to the TV like that was that was it like Raw Nitro that's when I discovered ECW yeah didn't didn't delve too much into the Japanese stuff so won't bother with it I I have literally no knowledge of it no knowledge of it no I I watch a little bit of it but was that long ago it was old Japan pro wrestling then (laughs) and now it's new Japan pro wrestling that's that's my joke of the hour. Uh, well, well, if that's your the sport, sport there you go. Carry it, yeah. There you so go. I knew who Jushin Thunder Liger was, and uh, Sir Oliver Humperdinck used to do the commentary, and that's where I got the name Humperdinck for me and you. That's where you came up with the name. Yeah. Sir Oliver Humperdinck used to do the commentary on Eurosport. He was a British man. <laughs> and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Well, Jamie, I have to say thank you very much for being on the show. Is that it? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay, that's do all you, you get. That's talk all. About no. Star Trek or no. Star Wars? No. No, I don't like any of that. I don't like any of that shit. <laughs> you love that stuff, Gerald. I, you know, one of these days, right? There's a show that I'm going to have to do, and it's going to have to be on the Eurovision, and I'm fucking dreading it. Well, you're going to have to do the Eurovision because my wife wants to be on it, and I'm not happy about it. And that. your wife is a fan of the Eurovision. Yes. It's well, a horrible, I'll horrible. I'll just say game. this: We were the rock and roll kids. <laughs> rock and roll was. 1994, Irish entry won the Eurovision. But like, is that like your your listeners want to listen? Don't want to listen to Eurovision stuff. They probably don't want to listen to me talk about uh, Hulk Hogan in 1990. But like, they want to. But talk your about listeners will. Yeah. <laughs> so that's great for me and terrible for you today. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Should we but touch on something a little more nerdy or? Go on, give us a bit of nerdy. Go on. I can <laughs> yeah, into the microphone him. if you want and push my glasses <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> Um, I don't like, uh, like not that I don't like. You're not I'm a nerd, though. You're not a. I never you're not got geeky. a. Uh, well, I am a little bit. Like, thanks very much. What am I? Like, cool? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus, no. No, no. I don't know. Like, I, I, I think that. Um, I don't know what happened. Like, all that stuff passed me by. All that Comic Con stuff. Uh, like, I stopped watching Batman movies when Michael Keaton said, "You're know, true in the tell." But I loved the first two. Yeah, the first two were the best two. I think so. When you look Let's at Batman films, they were the best. The Michael Keaton ones. Well, I, w- I, I hope they're the only two I've seen. Oh, well, fair enough. I haven't seen any of them. No, I tell a lie. I saw the one with Jim Carrey as the Riddler. So nah, that w- let's just forget about that one. Yeah, that was, that was, was that shit. George Clooney as the Batman? Uh, no, that was Val Kilmer. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah Val Kilmer. What would he and then George Clooney had nipples on his suit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, then, Bat- the first the first Batman film. I have a fond memory of going to the first Batman film. I think it was the first movie I ever went to see when I was a kid with my dad. Nineteen eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine, yeah. And uh, that was the first film. It was definitely it was the second film. I tell a lie. My ma brought me to see Land Before Time one day. It took me out of school. But that's that's your mother's horrible for doing that to you. That's a horrible. She's a horrible woman. Lula <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Coleman is a saint, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, the, the, I, I don't really remember going to see Land before. I remember 
vaguely, but I remember seeing Batman was the first time yeah. that my dad brought me to the cinema yeah. and at, at night time, Land Before Time was during the day. Uh, I shouldn't have said Land Before I should have went with the whole thing yes. that Batman was the first. The See, now you're starting Batman to say Batman was the first nerdy. film I saw. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but that was a fond memory for me. And mm. that's, I love that. I watch that movie to this day. And I love Back to the Future. Is that nerdy? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, there you go. Absolutely. I love Back to the Future. One, two. Even, even though, like, the whole idea of, the you know, going back in time is crap, but, you know, that's fine. <laughs> we could talk about that. Yes, we could. I exist. <laughs> Somebody needs to prove to me that it's not at all possible, if you ask me, because... Well, that's all right. Let's say it right now, right? If, if, if it was possible in the future, you would come back in time right now and say, right, it's possible, and they need to fuck off again. Look, it's not going to be possible for me or you to do it, because we're not smart well, enough. But I'll tell you one thing. Coming to the Loblaws Network, we're going to go back in time. <laughs> with the Hot Tag Time Machine podcast. So there you go. That has to be your team music. No, we already have team music. We've got it, so don't start that. It's like an old <laughs> version of the raw music. But like, um, uh, Back to the Future is, is something we could I discuss. Love Back to the Future, absolutely. In great detail. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Let's talk about it. Well, ask me a question, Jerry. Well, what's, your, what's your favourite one out of the three? Oh, two. There you go. No, do you know what? Fuck that one. No, Everyone says two and oh, you're supposed say to say three. two. I love the Western stuff. Do you, you don't love three. I do. I love the Back Western stuff. Back to the Future stuff. three, yeah. yeah? You really do? Love the Western you love stuff. It? Yeah. Okay. I think you're, I think you're, I think you're <laughs> fucking with me now. <laughs> I'm not. Three yeah. is my favourite. 100% I think, I love I think the West Tree Western. is underrated. I, I think it gets a bad rap, but like I don't think it's the best one. It's not everyone's favourite. I don't think I've ever... No, no one has said to me, oh, I love Back to the Future 3. No. Does Back I to the Future 3 hold a special place, a memory in your life, though? Because that's the thing. As I said, I love wrestling when it was... like I love stuff that was probably terrible, but it's a good memory for me. So maybe you like Back I to the Future the 3 because that's I the day you got... Vanilla ice cream for the first time or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I, I think I because I loved like Marty's descendant who was little Irish man with the little hat. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, look, he's Irish. He's, well, he's yeah, shit, okay. Irish accent ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I just love that part about it. Yeah. So yeah. why did you like? What about what? What is it about two that you love? I saw Back to the Future. Now I'm gonna Back to the Future two. What year did Back to the Future two come out? Oh no. You should no, know that sort of thing. Eighties though. Yeah. See. I'm starting to think that Batman wasn't the first movie I saw in the <laughs> cinema at all. Because I definitely saw Back to the Future 2 in the cinema. Because I remember... you praising your fucking memory in the choice. Yeah, I remember vividly at the end of Back to the Future 2, they uh, they had a, a clips of Back to the Future 3. Because they must have pre-recorded that yes. one. <laughs> That's right, they you did. Know? I remember that, actually, yeah. yeah. And I always remember thinking, when can we see that one? Like, can we go and yeah. see that one now? But no, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be... Wasn't going to be. Now, so you say I'm starting to think now that Batman was the first one because both films are out the same year, eighty nine. Well, there you go. Yeah. As, and I just thought that of myself. Nobody showed me on their phone or anything like that. <laughs> well, I've also made a liar of myself because when was the Land Before Time out? Um, I don't know. Look, Let me try and remember. On, Hold we, on, we need we to have remember a, this. We have a runner here who's going to look that up because if it's well, it's there you go. Land Before yeah, Time was go. the first. Do you know what? While you're at it, will you look up an American tale? Because it might have been a land before time at all. It could be an American tale. <laughs> I probably saw a taxi <laughs> driver in the cinema. I'm if you sure. saw a taxi driver at that age, I'd be very well, worried. 86 now. It was land before time. I couldn't have gone to the cinema when I was in 1986. I was only three. No. I wouldn't remember that, would I? No. 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 Well, then it was the land before time. The land before then time it was Batman. Reversed. Then it was Back to the Future 2. And then it was Home Alone. That's, that's how it happened. Then Home Alone? Yeah. What was that, 1990? 1990 was Home Alone. No, no, yeah. 1990, yeah. Yeah, that's a good... Is that nerdy? Yeah, absolutely. Is it nerdy? That's a lot is of it? nerdy stuff, yeah. But then I might be a little geek here, I don't know. Like, But that's just... You see, the whole idea of my show is the fact that you're nerdy about something. Now, the whole okay. classical term of nerdy is, oh, sci-fi and Star Trek and Star mm. Wars. But it's not. It's about something that you love, so you're nerdy about something. Right, well, something. then I'm not so scared anymore, because I go. thought it was Star Trek, no. Star Wars, and I don't... No. I don't understand any of that stuff. I've had people come on and talk about all types of shite. Yeah, I've never listened to them. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> this is just burn Gerald Day now, isn't it? No, I just, I've, I've never listened. I don't have time. I have a seven-month-old baby. Oh, well, I don't have time for this shit. This is, this is like, <laughs> you know, my podcast coming out once every four months. That's how little <laughs> time I have. But, like, I think that um, uh, if, if that's the case, then, yeah, I'm pretty nerdy about a lot of things. You're like. nerdy about wrestling. You're nerdy about Back to the Future. What else are you nerdy about? Back to the, uh, Home Alone. Home Alone. I love Home Alone. Home Alone is one of the movies that you should only really watch at Christmas. But I no. watched it last week. No, see, this is the whole thing about Christmas movies. And this, there, you know, there you go. Christmas movies, right? Yeah. You can watch Christmas movies any day. 
doesn't matter what it is. You can watch you your can. fucking Halloween. You can watch it on your birthday in the 20th yeah. of January. But if any yeah. listeners want to send me any presents, 20th of January, there you go. You can watch a Christmas movie anytime. You can watch a Halloween movie anytime. It's, if you would love it, fucking watch it. Who cares? Yeah, but there's nothing like watching a Christmas movie at Christmas time. Well, though it, I it watched Home Alone last week watching. and I felt a little bit like perverted or something watching <laughs> it in, Jul- in, in, in June or July or whenever, whenever, whatever month this is. Well, with your life... Yeah, we're July. Well, we're, we're July. Getting, we're yeah. under the exact date. Oh, you wouldn't know when this is coming out. You don't want to. Yeah, God knows. <laughs> you don't want to make out that you recorded this three weeks ago. Right? No, 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 no. This is <laughs> yeah. live, buddy. How alone is how alone is a fantastic film. What else am I nerdy about? What else do I love? Like, would you be nerdy about like any TV shows? Like, yeah, like uh, the Shield. There you go. You're nerdy about the Shield. You're nerdy about the Shield. There you go. I have never watched the Shield. Tell me about it. It's a fantastic <laughs> series that ran for seven seven seasons. Uh, starring Michael Chiklis as Vic Mackey, the rogue cop, but he's 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 the good cop that just can't help being bad, you know. <laughs> um, comes from uh, one of the writers or producers or some shit like that was Kurt Sutter, who then made Sons of Anarchy, okay. which I'm also nerdy about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's all I'm going to tell you about it, Jerry, because like, what else? Do now you we to have know? to go and watch it. Well, The Shield is a fantastic show that I think started in 2002. And it's it's re- if you watch if anyone out there wants to watch a good show, watch The Shield se- season one episode one, and if you're not hooked at the end of that episode, then don't bother. So that, right from the back, right from the very first the f- episode, if you're not the hooked. very end, the very end of that show, that like just before the credit roll, it's the kind of show that you will watch, and as the credit roll, you will go, holy shit, I cannot wait to see episode two of this. That's See, I'm always looking for a show like that. And that's yeah. that's good advice. You know it's what I mean? It's a little bit old. Is people sort of go, oh, 2002? That's a little bit old for me. But no, no. It was on Netflix at one point. I don't know if it's still on Netflix. Or not. I haven't seen it on Netflix. But, you know, we talked about Game of Thrones there a while ago. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, we hate can, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. No, we I'm love Game joking, of Thrones. This is the Game of Thrones network. Yeah, no, it's no I, longer low blows. I watched crap. every episode of Game of Thrones. I, I did watch every episode of Game of Thrones. Now, you say you watched it. But you're not saying I, I didn't watch it seven it. times like you did every yeah, episode. Yeah, no, well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, but I, no, I I watched it as a casual watcher. I yeah. did not go back and watch it again, which everyone seems to do. So what, were you I did thought, not know was everyone's thoughts? name in it. No, I really enjoyed uh, Game of Thrones at at the beginning. I really liked season one. I really liked Ned Stark, mm. and then when they killed Ned Stark, it left a little bit of a hole in my life. But I continued to watch, and I enjoyed Arya's journey. Mm. Uh, I was a big fan of the Jon Snow character. I was a big fan of the girl who said, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Egret. Made me think of Al Snow. Yeah, Al Snow. Who also knew nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny story about Al Snow. Uh, years ago, I said to my ma, will you pick me up the latest Power Slam edition? Uh, Al Snow was on the cover, and she went in and bought a magazine <laughs> with the cover, was covered in snow, because she thought, I, it was like a skiing magazine, she said, in her mind, get me a magazine that has all snow on the cover. <laughs> and that's what she got. Uh, that's my ma. And that magazine was probably just as useful as jo- Al Snow is. Uh, well, like, why are we bashing Al Snow all of a Because you started it. <laughs> I just said Al Snow knows nothing, but that's just because Jon Snow knows nothing. Uh, what else I like about Game of Thrones? Uh, I like Sansa's, uh, Sansa's resting bitch face. I never liked Sansa. And I said this on our show. We we talked about it on the the game of low blow shows, and never liked. She's a very good like nah. that face that you want to like smack. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah but f- <laughs> I just never liked. Yeah, her. but she didn't really go fully heel at all, which I assumed she was going to do at some point. Yeah, it kind of looked that way. You know, she dyed her hair black, and I was like, "Oh, here we go. This mm. is going to be good now." And then nothing. No, no. And I like who else did I like in Game of Thrones? Sorry, uh, I like. Uh, it <laughs> I'm one of them people that call her Khaleesi. <laughs> Because I can't remember her full Daenerys, Daenerys, Daenerys Mc, Targaryen. McMurphy, whatever her name was. <laughs> uh, I fancied her. Like that's why who, I liked who her. didn't? But like to be honest with you, like that that penultimate episode of Game of Thrones, where she turned heel, mm. that was fucking amazing to yeah. me. Like when she done that swerve, that turn, that to me that was like that was booking one hundred and one. Like nobody saw that coming. Well, you probably did, right? yeah. because you know. But I didn't as a casual fan. I was looking at that going. No, she's she's the she's so the baby. John Snow are the baby faces, and and they're going to prevail at the end. Yeah, I always thought Tyrion was going to die at the end, which he didn't. Mm-hmm. Thank God, because he's my favorite. 
He's everyone's favourite, isn't he? Yeah, I love Tyrion. Yeah. He was the best part yeah, about that lads. show. Yeah. The thing is, like, so many people bitched about that, that moment where she turned. She did. She turned deal. Yeah. That's what it was. But if you've been watching it all these years, you knew it was coming. It okay, wasn't yeah. a surprise to, you know, the, the hardcore fans. She definitely, yeah, he always, she definitely had a, 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 like a, an evil streak in her. Yeah. In, like from the very first point. episode of season two, because the people in, the, in Cart, in the city of Cart, said, no, we're not going to help you. She says, I'm going to come back with an army. I'm going to burn your city and kill all your soldiers. Mm. That's not the same person. She thought that she was doing the right thing, though. Yeah. She thought that she was, you know, collateral damage for a better world overall. But then John Snow killing all the people in the world is not a good idea. No, definitely not. I'm not saying I agree with her. <laughs> but like on the off chance she could have been right, John Snow stabbed her, and that was the end of that. That was that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sad though. The dragon. I'm an emotional guy. Like I, I, I am, especially since I had a baby. Like when my wife <laughs> had the baby, I have the baby. She had the baby. <laughs> uh, very emotional though. And, yeah. And watching the dragon get sad at the death of his mom. And I watched it with a friend of mine, and I was like, <laughs> like that's their mom. That's his mom. <laughs> you know, like... And when she went mental and went heel and, and started burning everyone, she saw them dragons as her children, and yeah. one of them had just been killed. So mm-hmm. she was not in the right, her right frame of mind. Well, like. for me, that, that part, that talk, you're talking about there, that was Rhaegal that got killed with the arrows and shit flying at him. For me, that was the, probably the saddest part of the whole season. I was like, oh, shit. Just... I don't know where you, t- you hear that lovely, like, yeah. that's the Targaryen song in the background. And it's in, she's happy yeah. and she's looking over, mm-hmm. oh, he's flying well, and boom, yeah. right in the fucking Rough, face. Like, and that's an animal dying. Like, I don't like, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover, so. You're animal, vegan? Animals that, huh? You're vegan? Nah, come on. Like, <laughs> grew up in Dublin 12, we didn't know what the fuck was going on with veganism. Like, if you didn't need a sausage, you were smacked. So, no, I eat meat. I just find it sad when dogs get knocked down. <laughs> Or dragons, or dragons falling in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also was a big fan of uh, Robs and Robs and or Jerome, whichever one Bron was. Oh, um, they had that song. Uh, uh, J- J- it's Jerome, is Jerome? Is it Jerome? Yeah, the, the Thanks, Runner. <laughs> well, that's J- Justy's favorite character. Oh Bron, yeah, they yeah. were because he didn't come in until season one, late. He was late ish. season one. Yeah. Yeah. So like Barry M- B. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and and Justy. Had watched season one before I did, and they were like, "Wait till you see Bran coming in, you know. <laughs> you love Bran. <laughs> That's my Barry. We and love my imp- Justy. We love impersonations on the show. Oh yeah, well I do a good Justy and a good Barry, but my Barry, Justy's a bit more, you know. I fucking wait till you fucking see Bran coming in, and if you don't fucking like it, like, and Barry's a little bit more like, oh, well, you might like him and you might not, but sure, look, I don't mind. I'm Barry Malone, you know. So. <laughs> Two of my best friends in the whole world who I've just lost. <laughs> no, I do. I love uh, love Justy and Barry so much. Yeah, well, Justy are, are, are two of my best friends. Justy, now, Justy would if you said anything about Braun at all, he would he would he defend Braun. To, loves to a bit the of Braun. He loves yeah. a bit of Braun to the point where his favorite wrestler is now Braun Strowman. <laughs> That's how much he loves Braun. That lad just because of the name. That lad had to come in with the name Braun. They, they, Justy wouldn't like him, but yeah, Justy loves loves Braun Strowman. <laughs> loves Braun more. From Game of Thrones. That's my knowledge of Game of Thrones. Other than the fact that uh, killing Jon Snow and bringing him back was just, to me, it was just a bit silly. It was just a bit silly? Yeah. And you like fucking Back to the Future? Back to the Future is a different story altogether. <laughs> That's not the <laughs> debate to do. <laughs> Back to the Future is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Time travel. Avengers Endgame proves it's not. I'm not, not. fully convinced time travel isn't possible in some way, shape, or form. I've, I've read enough National Enquirer to, oh to wonder. <laughs> but no, I think... Uh, I think. Uh, but see, there you go, though. You, yeah. you came on the show and you thought, oh, no, I have nothing nerdy I just to talk about. You loads yeah. nerdy I don't know. Star- I just know you're a big Star Wars fan, and I have not got... The, four- the only thing I know about Star Wars is when they brought out the, the new Star Wars in yeah. the late 90s, when the wrestling wasn't on, I went to see them because I loved wrestling. And if the wrestling was on, Clearly. I wasn't going. Yeah. So I went to see the Star Wars, and there was um, Jar Jar Binks. Him. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. And everyone that loves Star Wars hates yes. him. And I thought he was the best thing ever. I was of like, course you did, because you're like, the biggest fucking heel troll this, going this, around. I thought, this lad is gas. Look at him there, his funny voice and his funny little head. And 
the Star Wars fans are fucked. They would get that lad. The, and this, like, this is the thing about Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans are crazy. So they've come, you know, like fans, like hardcore fans of anything. Though. Exactly, yeah. But like, you know, you look at you know Game of Thrones theories that were coming flying out, and you're like, that's ridiculous. What are you talking about? So many Star Wars fans are now believe that Jar Jar Binks was behind everything, and he was the reason that it all happened, and he was the reason that he's the, the, the big bad guy in the end. He's the big heel. Right. That's. A, you know, I'm sure you're probably right. Or oh wrong. no, it's fucking stupid. Well, then you're 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 wrong. Are you right in what you say? <laughs> but what I'm saying is that's all I know about Star Wars. Are you telling me that he's behind everything? Yeah. Behind what? Exactly. Go watch it. Not it's on TV. DVD and Blu-ray now. <laughs> you, I still have a VHS player. <laughs> uh, I don't want to watch Star Wars. I don't have the time to watch Star Wars. I, just, I have no interest in it, and I don't know why. But we need to all watch wrestling, though. Wrestling? Mm. Yeah, okay. And we need to listen to your podcast. Yeah, please do, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be airing on uh, Mondays. Alternating between my new, myself and yourself on Monday. Yeah, we're going to do bi-weekly. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Or fortnightly, whichever way you want to do it. I prefer bi. Weekly. Well, so. see, now, the thing is, you've learned a lot now today. You've learned that you're, you're, you're nerdy about a lot of stuff. Is that and correct? you don't have to be nerdy about Star Wars. You can oh, be nerdy yeah, yeah. about whatever you want to be nerdy about. Yeah, well, I know now that people feel that Jaja Binks was behind the whole lot. Yes. Uh, the bastard. Yeah. I've learned that I like I, I could co- I could I always thought like there's no point I used to like I never listened to your show I listened to one of them hmm. I think Justy was on it yeah yeah uh, but I've always seen the the logo and thought that's a pretty cool logo and it's it's Jerry it's my friend Jerry so look at him there with his big fat head <laughs> looking all happy with his podcast but I always thought I could never go on that because I don't know who Captain Kirk is and I only know Jaja Binks but now I realise that I could have gone on and talked about Home Alone two yeah and Lost in New York and we could have had a great Time. Or Batman 2 with the Penguin. With the, uh, there's a film. Yeah. And I miss, uh, the, the Catwoman. Oh, the, yeah. the Catwoman. <laughs> there is no other Catwoman. She is the Catwoman. Michelle Pfeiffer? Yeah, no better Michelle than Pfeiffer <coughs> was in Grease 2. Did you know that? No. Never watched it. Well, I have watched Grease. I, I love Grease. I love Grease. And uh, I love Grease 2. I don't, I don't mind telling you. Grease 2 is an <laughs> underrated movie. Grease 2 would have been very good if it hadn't have been Grease 2. If it had been a standalone movie on its own... That'd be a classic. Yeah. But because it was Grease 2 and there was no John Travolta, there was no Olivia Newton-John, people were just having none of it. But Michelle Pfeiffer was the lead lady in that film. Mm. And she sang a great song called Cool Rider, which is, I think, the second or third song in it. And it goes a little something like this. No, I'm not going <laughs> to sing it. But everyone should, everyone should have a little scan of Grease 2 if they have an hour and a half free. Cool Rider, Cool Rider. And if he's cool enough, he can burn me true and true. That's that's my version of uh, Michelle Five. That was fantastic. Round of yeah. applause. I just don't have the equipment to give you. A, there you go. Round of applause. There's there we the, go. The runner. Look, look, shit up, runner. Don't clap <laughs> those hands. It's look def- up, look up, Grease too. Cool it's rider. It's <laughs> definitely not Rick Nash. Um, but Jamie, thank you very much. You know, we learned a lot about you today. Thanks Fuck all of it was about wrestling, but however, a little bit was. Yeah. But then again, as I said, I didn't know I could speak to you about anything other than wrestling. Anything you want. We should we should talk have about a, your hatred for Rick. We should go for coffee sometime. Coffee. Wait, hatred for. Who? Who goes for coffees? Go for beers. Let's go for a beer. Big bag of cans in the park. Jerry, calm down. <laughs> calm your tits. Well, Jamie, thank you very much thank you, much Jerry. for being on the show. It was, it was absolute m- mental ramblings of, of a father and son, <laughs> you know, despite the fact that you're older. But listen, thanks very much, and I wish you all the best of luck with the new podcast and with the new show in October 13th. October right? 13th, 13th. Mo Theater, Nace. Uh, go on to IrishRestandTees.com. You can get uh, half-price tickets there on before the tickets go on sale, uh, which is um, motheater.com, you'll be able to get tickets. And it's fully seated, theater-style seating. It's a really nice Sunday afternoon of wrestling. We don't take it too serious, much yeah. like this podcast. It's, uh, it's not, it's not going to be an indie classic. It's not going to be too hokey, though. So if you're 5 or 50, you'll go, you'll enjoy it. We try to throw in a, a bit of comedy like it's ridiculous carry on really like we once done musical chairs in the ring and it was fantastic so that's the sort of stuff you can expect musical chairs in match two and a hurricane rana in match four and a canadian destroyer in match six <laughs> and then you can meet the wrestlers it's great <laughs> <laughs> and that's no limit wrestling by the way that's no limit october wrestling, 13th there, yeah. and the show's called gone for gold and also irishwrestlingtees.com where we sell t-shirts thank you uh, any any more uh, he, he, he'll apparel. Well, the heel turn and Irish wrestling tees are one and the same thing. Yeah. So 
If you just go to Irish okay, wrestling. Okay, just get all the plugs out. Get them all Yeah, out. well, like, you're confusing the whole situation now. <laughs> you have just left it as it was. <laughs> IrishWrestlingTees.com will bring you to the shop, <laughs> which has t shirts, and that's it. it it's Irish Wrestling Tees by Heel Turn Apparel. There we go. It's the, the, the full thing. Well, Jamie, thank you very much. Uh, I, I've enjoyed myself. I hope you have. Our runner really has because he hasn't stopped laughing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we've had a fantastic day here today. So uh, from myself and Jamie and the, the runner, Mr. Nash. Uh, I've been Jerry. You've been nerdy. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs>